today, I will uh, present you uh, the hygienic option of our certification program for earning units. Uh, so this is the table of contents. I will uh, start with the context, then I will uh, explain some uh, headlines of the program and uh, a short overview of the requirement. So um, this hygienic option was uh, uh, created uh, back to 2016. Uh, at that time, so it was before the, the, the COVID pandemic. At that time, we wanted to uh, uh, to, to deal with some uh, uh, environmental uh, contexts like comfort, uh, environmental challenges, uh, the quality and the energy performance, uh, and especially the indoor air quality, as we know that it is really important in today's uh, building. Um, in our original certification program for air and units, we had uh, requirements on the performance of the unit like airflow, heating or cooling capacity, heat recovery efficiency, etc. and also casing performances, but specifically there were no uh, hygienic criteria. That is why we wanted to create uh, an option uh, in this program to, uh, to deal with those uh, subjects. Um, so the aim of this option is to ensure that um, all hygienic aspects of an annealing unit uh, be at uh, regard. Uh, we want to, uh, uh, to deal with the air quality of the building. We want to, uh, to check if uh, components are suitable for hygienic units. And we want to check if uh, um, there is a compliance with some uh, uh, well-known hygienic standards such as uh, ISO 846. And specifically, uh, the intention was to build uh, a program uh, which can be suitable for all types of commercial buildings and not only hospitals or very specific processes. Um, because when we created this uh, option uh, a few years ago, in the mind of many people, hygienic and units were only associated with very specific applications, such as uh, hospitals or um, high-end processes with very specific uh, criteria. Uh, our aim was to build an option which could be suitable for any type of building who could receive uh, people uh, in it, such as uh, schools and so on. So uh, we did develop an additional uh, uh, reference document, uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, rating standard dedicated to hygienic units. Uh, this uh, standard was built uh, as usual uh, when we do it uh, within ECC with the AHU compliance committee and the dedicated technical subcommittee. And now I will uh, provide you some uh, information about the headlines of the program. So the first point to, uh, to, um, to say is that um, to be a hygienic HU according to uh, this Eurovent uh, certified performance mark, uh, the first requirement is to be certified according to the basic HU uh, program. And this is uh, obvious. And already this program provides some uh, very interesting features such as the certification of the software. We have seen before that um, the software is a very good tool to avoid any uh, uh, mistakes in the design of the unit. Uh, also, this program uh, involves some audits of the production places uh, every year and also tests on the complete earning unit uh, system, including all the relevant components in order to assess the performance of the system, the earning unit system as a whole. Uh, and then we have uh, built this uh, option and we have defined three levels. Um, again, this was to, to be able to assess the performance of hygienic units, not only for hospitals, uh, but for all type of products. So as I said before, there are three levels, level one, two, and three. Uh, level one is 
uh, more uh, dedicated to applications such as hotels, schools, offices, retails. So this is really um, what we wanted to do building this uh, this program is to make sure that uh, this uh, option could be suitable for such uh, applications because hygienic uh, earning needs should be also uh, provided in such applications. And today it is uh, uh, more than ever um, the case. Um, of course, uh, it is um, these uh, uh, type of applications are, let's say, uh, some recommendations, but um, let's say at, at the end, it is the designer who will decide which level uh, is the most suitable for it, his application. Uh, level two could be uh, more dedicated to hospitals. Uh, uh, to be precise, it is not dedicated to uh, white rooms, surgery rooms, but for the building, the hospital. But of course, a level two uh, criteria can be also used for office, schools, hotels, and retails if it's uh, required. And then the level three uh, could be uh, dedicated to very uh, specific uh, processes, uh, which requires a very high quality indoor air uh, quality, such as uh, food processes, uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry, and white rooms. But of course, um, any uh, designer could request a level three for uh, any application if he thinks it is uh, suitable. Then I will uh, provide you some information about the uh, requirements covering the, uh, this option. Uh, we can define three categories of requirements. Uh, and uh, we can see that there is uh, 59 of them in this uh, reference document. So we have re general requirements covering manufacturing, shipment, et cetera. We have requirements dedicated to the unit housing um, we talk about materials, maintenance, age arrangement, and then uh, requirements regarding the air treatment itself, uh, more specifically uh, requirements on the internal components of the AHU, uh, filters, coils, fans, etc. Um, here you have uh, the overview of this, uh, the topics that are uh, covered by this uh, reference document. So uh, the general part covers, covers planning, manufacturing, shipment. The unit housing is dedicated to uh, metallic materials, non-metallic materials. As we have seen, it is very important to, uh, to limit the growth of microorganism uh, on those uh, units. Also the HU arrangement, how the different components are um, arranged in the unit. This is very important as we have seen uh, before. Uh, in our case, surface. Inspection, maintenance, and cleaning. This is really a very important topic. Um, hygienic units should be easy to inspect, easy to in maintain, and easy to clean uh, so that it is really done uh, on site. And of course, filter maintenance is, uh, is uh, a requirement. And on specific uh, requirement reg regarding air treatment, we have uh, all the components listed here, filters, coils, humidifiers, uh, heat recovery systems, fans, and silencers. Uh, just to give you uh, an idea of how it is uh, uh, done, uh, we have a list of requirements. And for all these requirements, we define uh, criteria for the three uh, levels. So you can see some uh, example here. Um, what we have tried to do is to define very, very precise requirements that cannot be, uh, let's say, discussed. Um, this was a remark from uh, uh, manufacturers at that time, was that existing uh, hygienic standards um, were providing very good requirements, very interesting requirements, but it was very difficult to assess if a unit would comply, yes or no, uh, without any doubt. Uh, so we tried to um, define very precise requirements so that manufacturers uh, would be able to know if they reach those requirements uh, for sure. 
Here I provide uh, an example of this. Uh, you have in the VDI uh, some requirements regarding the uh, inspection and maintenance. We can see that um, they say that accessibility for inspection and cleaning of wet and contaminated surfaces in contact with the handled air, uh, sufficient space shall be available for maintenance. So this is a requirement. This is very good, but how do we define that sufficient space um, is available for uh, maintenance. Um, as we have seen in the previous uh, presentation, there are very specific criteria uh, defining minimum uh, length of the openings uh, to allow uh, somebody to uh, clean uh, the inner surfaces of the units. So according to the level that you want to reach, um, the, this reference document defines this uh, minimum length and it is possible to know for sure if a unit complies with uh, the different levels or not. Finally, uh, and what is very important is to know that uh, this hygienic option is also related to the software of the manufacturer. Just as the main program for earning unit, um, the software of the manufacturer will have to provide the information of the hygienic level of the unit and this software will have to include in it in its uh, uh, code the different rules that we have defined in our standard so it means that once uh, you select a unit uh, you will know uh, for sure if it uh, complies with um, level one two or three uh, because the software of the manufacturer will include all the requirements in it and that will provide the result automatically. So this is a, also a very important aspect. And finally, I would like to, um, to show some uh, uh, links between uh, uh, the requirements of uh, this uh, standard and the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation. Uh, I've uh, provided some examples of uh, uh, guidance from uh, REVA on COVID-19. Uh, for example, they uh, recommend to, uh, to have a safe use of the heat recovery sections. Uh, internal leakage from exhaust to supply side shall be limited. And specifically in our standard, we request that uh, the internal leakage shall be uh, limited to a maximum of 5% and that there is a uh, if there is recirculation, sufficient filtration on supply or return, or return side has to be uh, there. Also, uh, there is in this guidance document from Riva, there is a, um, a note on the maintenance. Uh, maintenance is really important because, uh, for example, um, if you don't, do not do maintenance uh, often, uh, your filters, uh, the pressure drop of your filter, will increase and then this will have a negative effect on the uh, supply airflow. It will reduce the airflow. And as we have seen, one of the main requirements is that uh, sufficient airflow, uh, sufficient fresh air should be provided uh, in the building in order to mitigate the risk of uh, the virus propagation. So maintenance is key. And as we have seen, this uh, standard provides a set of very precise and complete requirements on uh, inspe inspection, maintenance, and cleaning uh, for all components. Uh, and uh, namely, uh, any component shall be easily either accessible or quickly removable so that it can be uh, maintained and cleaned. That's all for myself. I thank you very much for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Sylvain. Um, I have a question for you regarding uh, the difference between the, this, we have heard that the, the main standards are uh, from BDI and the DIN and the one from Eurovent. Uh, the, as, as much as I understood it, so the Eurovent program actually is the only uh, available certification program which where you can really compare products against each other because the other ones, as we heard, have different interpretations. So Eurovent provides a program where you, where you really can uh, compare the products of different manufacturers or products of a manufacturer against each other, right? 
Yes, the, the, the specificity of this uh, hygienic option is that it defines different levels with very precise requirements. So as you said, it's uh, very easy to compare uh, systems uh, between each other because there is a very simple uh, uh, mark, level one, two or three, so that we can uh, uh, make the difference between the different uh, units. And as I said also, uh, we try to um, uh, have very precise requirements uh, so that it is, uh, uh, there is no doubt about uh, the fulfillment of any uh, uh, criteria uh, on this hygienic uh, aspect.